Good Friday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks and SUVs, motorcycles, the dogs, the snow. Wow. I mean, wow. I mean, wow. I didn't think we were supposed to get this much snow. I mean, we're getting some snow. I just may have to get out my big tractor and do some snow piling today. Whip the dude all right? Wow. Hey, good morning, everybody there for the Friday morning conversations. Thanks for tuning my channel. As always, appreciate the nice comments, support, interactions with all that uh, kind of stay tuned with all my adventures and antics and views and ideas. It's the winter wonderland. Wow. I mean, it really is a winter wonderland here. Boy, boy, I tell you, we just haven't had a lot of snow here in the last few years. And this is pretty exciting in some ways. And in other ways, not so much because after a while, the snow gets old, but I mean, the snow is a lot of fun, and there's Kiefer Boy all wound up, harassing the little girl, stop it, and wow, I could do some nice four-wheeling today, we could do some dirt bike riding, oh my goodness, it's Friday, and I've had the conversations this week about the weather, basically, cold day, Monday, hot day, uh, what, what do we have, you know, what do we have, spring, I'm thinking now we have, uh, how about the summer conversations we've gone from the winter conversation on wednesday to the spring conversation yesterday and i think summer would be the appropriate conversation because boy oh boy after you, you hang out with this stuff for a while if you're not bred for the the winter months you just get sick of this stuff but it's really pretty and it's different it's a change come on you guys cut it cut it out cut it out come on get in here come on that little girl tear him up you know that little girl's a ferocious little girl so here we are coming into the shop i mean the ice age tv youtube channel is so appropriate think about it because it is the ice age it is the icy snowy day so it is pretty cool and that aspect and boy i drove these cars yesterday i'd say we've got a good two three inches so far and i even know what the uh, forecast is i don't know if we're supposed to get four or five inches i mean up here get a four or five six inch storm that's pretty significant for this area. Usually you just don't really get that much. Here's my barn door that's probably having a hard time opening it up. Let's get the stove shovel out and start shoveling. And the dogs are loving that. So how do you keep the ongoing conversations with all the uh, the rhetoric? You know, what's the theme? What are we talking about? Summer, well, that's easy. Talk about summer because at some point between the winter months and early spring, you really get that itch in you to have those really hot days to go swimming, boating, motorcycle riding. I mean, there's so many things that go along with the summer months that give us so much more freedoms, especially on how you dress and get bundled up. I've got like four layers of clothes on between my undershirt, shirt, pullover shirt, jacket, then my, my buff, and my Harley hat. And yeah, so the summer months gives us so much that freedom of being able to ride our motorcycles, if you got a convertible car, uh, if you're a big golfer, if you're just an outdoor enthusiast, the summer months, really the spring, summer months, even the fall. But I mean, for summer, for me, growing up boating most of my life, that was just an enjoyable time of year because you can just uh, enjoy the outdoors when you don't have to wear much and you have to get your tan. And if you watch my video channel, You'll see there's tons of video of us being out in the boat, out in the water down there in Florida. And even though you can say, well, go to Florida, go boating. <laughs> I mean, I've been down in Florida many times where it's cold. I mean, it's cold out there. I got my boat 2017. It was late March, early April. I towed it down there to Florida to where my brother and dad live. And I tell you what, that was brutally cold. We took that boat out. It was a cold, cold day. So don't get caught up thinking that you've got the Bahamas or just to say that that real southern uh, warm weather in the dead of winter, just because you're down south, you don't. A lot of times, Florida gets some 30 degree weather. It gets pretty cold down there. So the summer adventures, yeah. What does that turn into? Well, for me, I uh, talked to some detail yesterday about the Ford Bronco or the Ford uh, Ranger, Ford Ranger Raptor, and that's going to be kind of interesting. Is the Ford Bronco? And the Ford Ranger going to share the same underpinnings? I mean, I, I could have sworn years ago that the Ford Bronco and Ford Ranger are built on the same assembly line. 
think they are. So the question is, is the new um, Ford Ranger Raptor, is it had the architecture of this Ford Bronco? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't think it does. But maybe it does. I'm not real sure. I mean, the one I built, it priced out about fifty nine nine. Now you build a brand new Bronco Raptor, that thing's gonna price out like at ninety plus thousand dollars. So to me, it'd be very intriguing to know that there's a thirty thousand dollar difference because you don't have a rear um, cap in so many ways. I mean, think about it. I mean, the, the Ranger in some ways just doesn't have a rear cap. Now nah, it's got to be a whole different underpinnings, but it has the same motor. Um, I don't know. Does it, does it have 37s? My guess is why it's 35s. I'm not even really sure. No, it doesn't. I remember looking at those tires. Now, the tires and wheels aren't that big, actually. So, no. I think those tires are probably 33s. Maybe 35? I bet you they're 33s. I don't know. I haven't looked that up. It's so new and fresh. And I tried to, I built one. Actually, what I did yesterday, I built two. Yes, I, I do this when I kind of order things. So I put an order in to Coons Baltimore Ford of an iconic silver, and then I put an order in to Orsman Ford in Manassas, where my good friend Alex works, and he got me that Raptor 37, and I put a hot pepper red order for that. So I have two, so my attitude is who gets it first, which one looks better, which one do I take? And so I do have ordered two, but technically my sales guy and sales lady Emily haven't uh, reached out. Derek or Emily haven't reached out to me and said, hey, we got your order, and we put it in the system, and now you're good to go. I haven't heard that yet. And that's kind of weird because when I ordered the Bronco, I ordered the Lightning truck, um, they made you put like a $100 deposit to an order for you to uh, reserve your order, and then they would keep you updated on what's going on. And that's pretty neat when you feel like you're more interactive with your order, and you kind of know what's going on besides uh, the dealership knowing what's going on. So, and I never even had that happen with my Ford Mustang as my selling dealer that put the Dark Horse order in for me, Derek. I never was really in tune with where that car was. And in so many ways, it was a total accident how that even played out that we kind of came to closure with the strike last fall. Does anyone remember the strike last fall? That uh, my Dark Horse wouldn't probably come in until first of the year. This car came in, and a person walked away from the deal. I bought it. I modded it. Just kind of feeling like that's probably good for now. And I'll reevaluate first a year. Then, then my dark horse shows up, and not this one, the Ember Blue Metallic, that looks more like a GT. And if you're watching my channel, you'll see I didn't take that. and ended up taking the showroom one that I guess they ordered or somebody ordered. So, yeah, it just that's the thing. That's why if I have lots of options then uh, I can evaluate what seems to make sense. Does anything make sense? Look at you guys. What are you guys doing? Hey, just chill out. Chill out. What is going on with you guys? You're just wound up. Get out here. He just loves to harass that girl. That's just, come here. Keep her. Keep her. Yeah, the, the, the baby boy. Get out there and chase a ball. Where's your ball, huh? Where's your ball? Where's your ball? Do you want a ball? I think you need a ball. Here. Here's a ball over here. Come here. Here's a ball right here. Come here. Look here. Right, what's it right there? Get that ball. Get it. You dummy. Get the ball. I'm like, this is so funny because he is uh, the ball. Here you go. Come on. Nope. That's not good enough. See, he's killed it. He's destroyed it. So get some snow on it and it'll get hard. Yeah, goofball. So, anyways, so yeah, what does this spring and summer bring? Well, I can only hope that between spring and early summer, my Ford uh, Raptor Ranger comes in, and that'll be pretty fun. That'll be something neat. But here's the challenge. What am I going to give up? I'll have to give something up <laughs> because it's Ford Motor Credit to buy the deal. So there, that's a whole other challenge of where I go with that. And all I wish those electric vehicles over there had any value. It's pretty sad on how these electric vehicles have totally tanked, just totally tanked in value. Just beyond believable just incredible and you know what 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 has created all that i mean why why is that i mean why why has the electric um sensation the electric drive and even though there is a great article i've read i've read a lot of articles the reality is electric vehicles per se the sales they're not down so last year they had the most sales in our country electric vehicles so even though 
you're hearing a dire straight electric vehicles, it's still ongoing. People are still buying electric vehicles, and there are going to be even more electric vehicle sales coming through the 2024 year. And you just have to ask yourself, but why, right? But why? But I mean, it's so much about the um, the, the, the dealers, or I shouldn't say the dealers, I should say it's so much more about the manufacturers having the hand forced um, that they're, they're having to abide by all these new, very strict emission laws by the governing bodies that are getting very, very strict. And these uh, deadlines are starting to come closer than you think. You start going to 2026, 2027, 28, 29, 30. And what you, uh, you know, what you're, what you're going to see is just very tough EPA guidelines that are forcing these manufacturers to bring the EV car into the market. And they're diligently working more than ever to make the cars um, have longer range. They're working to try to get them to be uh, a uh, less money per se. They're working diligently to put in charging stations. So I mean, everything everything is happening. That's uh, there you go. So there's the German Shepherd boy. Hey, came out. So Scout, he's the boy. He's not going to take that boy doing what he's doing. Stop it, Keeper. You're just wound up. Probably better putting them in the in the office because Kiefer's just too wound up. I mean, come here, get in here. What are you doing? Stop it. So, but without with all that going on, with all the control of the governing bodies forcing the manufacturers to bend to their new guidelines, the consumers just start jumping up and down. The consumers just aren't um, really taking the bait uh, more than ever. Would you, would you have to kind of agree with that? Even though I know there's lots of people on my channel, watch my channel, have the Rivian or have a Tesla or may have a Ford Mustang Mach-E or may have a Lightning. But it's a very, you're still a very minority, minuscule. And I've done it many times. You go to the inventory of all these car dealerships and the amount of Mach-E's and Lightnings is, uh, is really uh, substantial. So what's going to, you know, what's going to change where the, the growth of the electric market really starts to really take off. I mean, really, when when does that really happen? Is that another three to five? No, Keeper. Is that another three to five years of uh, before it really? Uh, Keeper just wants to be beat up by everybody. Look at this. The pack just wants to beat his ass up. Yeah, I see the young one. He's the new guy that thinks that he's going to take control. These other guys, like, no. Yeah, so we know. That these stories growing up with a bigger brother or sister, or you go to work somewhere, or you're the young guy that comes into the, the you know the business or whatever it may be. Yeah, stop it! Hey, Keever, there's a scout. He's radical. I mean, he'll get. Hey, hey, come here. Just get in. Get in, scout. Get in the office. Get in. You guys are getting too wound up. Nope. No. 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 Scout. Get in. Get in. No, he's. I mean, he's wound up. I mean. This dog here, oh my goodness, get in, come on, let's go, get in office, get in, get in. You guys are getting too rambunctious. I don't like what I'm seeing here. It kind of gets worse than he knows those things. So yeah, look at the bikes. No motorcycle riding anytime soon. I guess all the snowmobile guys are excited as all get out. All the snowplow guys are excited as all get out because we've had such lousy uh, winters here. All these guys that went out and bought all their snow equipment. Hey, come on, let's go. get up there. Get up there. Come on, let's go. Come on. Keever, you guys can do that. I'm going to turn the heat on. Keever, get up there. Come on. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. As he likes just to ruin my office with all this debris everywhere. Not too bad, right? Oh, wow. Okay, so it turned on. Freezing point. That's at least good. No. Come on, get up here. Keith, just go. Get away. Get away. Get away. All right. Chill out. So, all right, get back down here. Sorry for all the distractions, but it's not simple being me, right? You ever know those stories? Sure you do. If you have kids, business, wife, whatever. So, yeah, so the summer adventures, not so much. The winter adventures, yes. But, yeah, a lot of guys in this area... We did have some pretty good snows some years back, and a lot of people went out and bought a lot of snow equipment. And if you're a landscaper guy, this is big money. This is good money. If you've got contracts, 
to clean out shopping centers, commercial properties. But then for the car dealerships, what does this do to the car, car dealership industry? Does this have people calling? Do they want to buy a four-wheel drive vehicle now? I mean, does this just take a few snows where the phone starts ringing? The guy wants to buy a truck and plow? I don't know. I would think so. Somebody said the other day, which I don't disagree. I should, I should have put a plow, a little blade with the winch in the front of this, and take it and clean my driveway off. That'd kind of be fun, wouldn't it? Probably more efficient than these big tractors I have to have to move everything around. So here we are. It's Friday. What's going to happen today for me? There's not really any car adventures going on. No motorcycle adventures going on. Nothing really going on. It's kind of a quiet. And here's what's interesting. I'm getting to the point in January. Uh, if this would be a record probably that in January, if I don't buy a car, motorcycle, that would go down to the first month, I believe, of a January in many years, I didn't buy anything. So, wow. How does that all play out, right? I mean, so right now, I thought I had a deal on that Jeep Ranger 392, but I just didn't play out. And the kid just loves that wild track. She is so much loving that wild track. She just now despises the Jeep Gladiator. She doesn't like it. And the reason is because the wild track is so much more powerful. The wild track has a really cool exhaust. The wild track just gets down the road. So she's totally now like, eh. But, and that's the thing. That's the card in the deck to be able to go buy something else. But it's not because Jeep is discounting these things like $17,000. So that truck there that I paid like sixty for last year, it's worth $40,000 in the market right now wholesale. Maybe an aggressive dealer could maybe give me forty two, maybe. But I geez, that thing's not even a year old. I didn't put much money down that thing, so I'm buried in that thing now. But I mean, for me, whatever. But the point of that is, it would be a tool for me to go get something else. But what's it going to be? And it can be three ninety two because it gets too expensive, too much money, too much money out of pocket. Who are the payments and all going to change? That's got people you know watch my channel. You know the danger is, I bought a sixty thousand dollar truck. Once you get into a ninety thousand dollar Wrangler, then you got fifteen. 20 grand negative equity, and then you try to buy that, and you're going to have to put down $20,000 to make the deal go down. I mean, that's huge money. There's no way. But then you're still going to have a huge car payment. So it just doesn't make any sense. And that's kind of what goes on a lot of times the back end. And that's where we were going with that 392. They were wanting like $20,000 down. But there's no way. There's no way. And that's why a deal never played out because I got them down to 10 grand down. But then at the last minute, the dealer, the owner, he came to realize that ten grand down, he was making nothing. So that's why he wanted to put another three grand down. That way, he hit three grand in the deal. That's why I was like, forget it, man. We went round and round. You finally get the deal bought, and I'm out. And that's why that ain't coming home, and it's not a real big deal. Because here's the thing. Would I rather have a, a Ford Ranger Raptor? I would. By all means. I guess the TRX, so many ways... The TRX and that 392, I just, I don't know. I just don't, I was just, yeah. And, and the thing is, the Bronco Raptor, it just outdoes that 392 Wrangler. I'm sorry, even if there's a 392 Wrangler, they're cool. But there's no way they drive as nice as that Bronco Raptor. There's no way, they don't. Uh, the Ford Raptor truck, 37, that drives so much more fun than that Ram TRX. I know, the Ram TRX is badass. I'm not here saying your truck and your Wrangler are badass. I'm just saying the reality is that those these vehicles drive better. They're more fun. Even though you don't have the power, they're more fun. I get the freaking Raptor R. Uh, yeah, that would be really crazy. So, all right, so here we are. What are we going to do next, right? Well, the good news is the Whipple Supercharger is probably not far away from being built. So I would hope by the end of this month, um, maybe 1st of January, that Whipple Supercharger super comes in. Oh my gosh, that'd be so great. The front splitter on this, which is damaged underneath, um, came in. My sales guy called me yesterday. I'm like, dude, there's no way I'm driving this car anytime soon. So be interesting when the Whipple Supercharger comes in. Um, hopefully the weather has changed and I can get this car up to Coons Baltimore Ford. And wow, is this dark horse going to be just truly a really blast of a car 
And I would have never imagined a year ago that I'd be looking at a dark horse sitting in my garage with me putting a supercharger on it when I had a supercharged GT500, two of them, and but the DCT. So that's going to be a whole different ride. Uh, the Harley, the big Harley reveal, as I talked about here yesterday, the big reveal is on the 24th. So that's uh, going to be interesting to see what plays out. And, you know, you guys have to say to yourself, why would they do a big reveal on the 24th of January of just to show the same touring bikes? And one Harley dealer up in Frederick, Maryland, really cool guy, big guy, he was just adamant about it. There's no way they're bringing a new style um, Harley Davidson um, touring bike because they just had too many leftover 23s. And I'm just like, there's no way, man. There's, it's a 10 year run. Harley's got to be crossing the bridge. Come on, pups, let me get up here. Hands are freeze. So I got to get in here because my right hand is going to go burr, burr. All right, so he's chilled out, thank goodness. That's what you got to do. You got to just get that aggression to calm down. Maybe knows those stories as we sit down. Get some more heat here. And what do I do here? Oh, I did it wrong. So, yeah. The bull horns that I got from Florida. All right, turn around the phone here. Can I do? I don't know. Oh my gosh! Sit on down and keep the uh, conversation going on the uh, of the Ice Age TV content of the cars, motorcycles, and something I thought about is now. Turn on here now. No, no. Oh goodness. So we're gonna have a lot of we're gonna have a lot of uh snow still kind of coming in. Yeah, it'll be interesting for the day here for us. So it's always about what's going on. And now that we're in the uh election year, I've talked about it a gazillion times in Davis, they're wrapping the the economic forum up and uh it's really interesting. The, the artificial intelligence with a really a lot of the concern and content. But you know what's incredible? I wish I was a savvy stock guy. I'd make, you know, I just, you know, some people out there I'm sure are very astute. And I don't think I did that right. And I'm just sure that somebody have made good money in the stock market. We say last year was a great year. But one of the hottest markets was the, uh, um, the semiconductor chips and the artificial intelligence. So if you're a stock person, if you invested into Nvidia, you know that Taiwan semi semiconductor manufacturing company, TSMC or whatever, um, they kind of had some challenges, but they're back on the radar screen. They're they're back here in Arizona, getting the monies to uh, build that new semiconductor factory right in Arizona. I've talked about before, but they're delaying it because. It's not being built properly. They don't have the qualified, skilled laborers to really make that thing uh, correct. So now they're saying instead of it being ready by 2025 or 2026, they may be 2027. So all this infrastructure that Joe Biden used on this, uh, the uh, IRA, the Inflation, Inflation Reduction Act, these monies are being dispersed. There's definitely companies taking advantage of that and doing it. But at the same time, it's challenging for these foreign companies to come here and set up shop because they just don't feel like we have the skilled labor in our country to make things right, which there's a major argument between the union, the union out there in Arizona and the owners of the uh, TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, and they've really have kind of had, they've, they've put the, the construction on hold to try to work through the differences of the uh, people that are claiming they know what they're doing, but they're claiming they don't know what they're doing. So, the point of that is, over there at Davis, the whole conversation is all this chat GPT, the generative pre-trained transformer. I've talked about it a gazillion times. It's all about the Bill Gates and the Sam Altman and Elon Musk. Where's Elon Musk? I don't think, I don't think Elon Musk even went to that, that um, event. He probably doesn't feel like getting called out. I mean, Elon's such the one-man show in so many ways. So, over there, <clears throat> as they wrap that all up, I got to think of myself that now what we're, we're witnessing now is the constant rhetoric of Donald Trump's going to be the, a dictator. Donald Trump's a dictator. Donald Trump's the worst thing to happen in this country. And I'm just thinking it's pretty incredible. 
I don't know. Does anybody really think that under Joe Biden, this country is really now better off? I mean, I just don't get it. I mean, sincerely, why, why does anybody think that under Joe Biden, this country is better off? I don't understand this. Everything's more expensive. The illegal immigration is through the roof. <laughs> um, crime, they've, re, you know, they've recategorized what crime is, but crime is through the roof. Uh, I mean, we're in three wars. We're, we are, I think we're in three wars. We're basically in Ukraine-Russia war. We are in the Israel-Gaza uh, war. And now we're in the Iranian um, uh, war as well. I mean, this is real stuff. But is there some reason so many Biden supporters say that this is the best times ever in this country and everything's just great? It's beyond, And this guy, Joe Biden, is, is uh, you know, is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Now, here's what's really interesting. This guy, Mike Johnson, this guy... Matt Gates. I've never been a Matt Gates fan. This guy, I mean, it's so weird how this guy really got hammered under Trump's um, administration of being involved in, 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 I guess, sexual activity with a minor. I don't know. I don't know all the details on that. I didn't really just get caught up in the inquire of reading all this dirty laundry. But I swore this guy was borderline getting ready to go to jail. But, I mean, I guess he beat all that. But this guy, my, Matt Gates. Uh, unseats um, Kevin McCarthy and puts in place Mike Johnson. And all this guy Mike Johnson is doing is kicking the can to the curb. Is anybody paying attention on how, once again, Mike Johnson, who is trying to ratify the uh, annual budget with what monies go where on the $1.7 trillion uh, wish fund or whatever it is, and how it's a constant headbutt against Ukraine and the illegal immigration. And so that's the ongoing challenge is so many hardcore conservatives that are in office don't want this Ukraine money continue to be um, dished out without this money being dished out for the well-being of our own here in our own country of the immigration laws. And so it's just incredible how Mike Johnson at the last second, ratifies a, a bill that Chuck Schumer and him smile and they say, okay, we're going to fund the government another month or two months. Does anyone remember November of last year it was supposed to be a shutdown of the federal government? They couldn't come to agreement of the monies for the annual budget. At the last second, they did a bipartisan bill and they kicked it to January 19th or 24th or whatever. Well, if you're following the news, Joe Biden has on his desk today to sign a bill and now push this continued funding of the federal government until now March, like the middle or late March. So Mike Johnson, all he continues to do is he just he just literally can't address the reality of getting a bill passed. And so what some are speculating is there's a few Republicans that are out sick that he needs those crucial votes to get his way versus the Democratic way. And so I guess in some ways, he just continues to uh, you know, maneuver himself to push it down the road. So he feels like he's got the right amount of people to vote in favor to his uh, policies and agendas. But it goes to March. Well, you know, I'm, I'm sure something else will come out. I'd be willing to bet this goes into election, election months. I'll be, I'll be amazed if it doesn't go into election months and this guy, Mike Johnson, then kicks it again. It's been March, so kick it to probably May. And then in May, they'll kick it again to like probably like, I would say, July or August. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Meanwhile, the illegal immigration doesn't, uh, isn't being resolved, and yet so many Biden supporters in this country feel that that's not a big deal. That you're, you're a mean person to let all these illegals not let them come to the country. So here, but here's a word that I think is interesting that came from the, uh, you know, you, you get on these social media things. So I read this thing here <clears throat> that was posted. Over the last 20 years, states have put barriers in front of the ballot box imposing strict voter ID laws, cutting voting 
times, restricting. So you know the, the constant rhetoric now is going to be that the conservatives are going to be really concerned about this open voting of the, the mail-in voting, the ballot voting. And it's going to be very, very concerning because people feel that that's such a cheating way of voting. So, and what they say is, what you're going to hear more than ever now is the, the word suppression. You're going to hear it all year long. All you're going to hear is the point the finger at Donald Trump and all his supporters that are losers. That's what you're going to hear all year long. That, you know, if you're a liberal person, don't get caught up in this Donald Trump or the conservatives. They're losers. Their views are losers. They're dictators. They're Nazis. They're white supremacists. These are all the things you're going to hear the rest of the year just to continue to push the Biden agendas that they don't want Trump to be back in office because it takes away their agendas. So here it is. What is the meaning of political suppression? Political repression is an act of a state entity controlling a citizenry by force for political reasons, particularly for the purpose of restricting, preventing the citizen's ability to take part in the politics, political life of a society, thereby reducing their standing among their fellow citizens. Did I just read the green agenda? Did I just read you the green agenda? What is going on in the car industry? I mean, you as, a, you as an individual are being suppressed more than ever if you're an ICE person. Yes. I mean, the, what, is the, what is the governing bodies and the green agenda doing? They're controlling. This, this city administration is the most controlling governing body ever in modern times. But the liberal-sided person... The Biden supporter will tell you I am so wrong, that I'm full of baloney. But if you just read what I just read, what is going on in today's society? We know. What did the, the liberal side sided uh, governing body side with? Defund the police. What is a liberal sided minded body sided with? Uh, elect district attorneys that raise the limits of what are crimes. And to let those be uh, out of jail instead of in jail. Um, what has the liberal-minded um, party supported? Uh, political figures that support illegal immigration more than ever. These are the, the most dominant sanctuary cities or democratic cities. But yet, they're going to claim that you're, if you're a conservative and your views and ideology are twisted and you're, whack, you're wacky. As we witness these inner cities in a shambles where you've already seen New York, New York City, they sent kids home from school to house all these illegal immigrants in a school because they're all going to freeze. What are they going to do? So, wow, just beyond believable of what you're going to hear. And what's so sad is the younger generation hears this constant bullying by the liberal media machine to tell the conservatives that they're a bunch of losers and they're not, um, they're not right-minded people. And they're dictators, they're white supremacists, and a blah, blah, blah. And oh, and then we go to the Roe versus Wade. We go to the, uh, it's my body, not your body. So all this stuff is going to be ratcheted up like you've never seen in this coming year. We'll be telling so many that the conservative base doesn't, you know, wants to control your body. Um, I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, where are we, where are we going? And we can only hope. That there's more people like the Ice Age TV um, subscribers and Ice Age people that want the better for mankind. And I, I think that most people here would all be on the same page. We want the best for our country. We really do. We want to help each other. We, and, we, and so here's what I thought. Is I think that we should have the new voting laws. If I had the powers to be, I would create the new voting laws that say, if your party wins for your ideology, for all your programs, then you pay the way. And the party that didn't vote for this doesn't pay the way. So here we go. This would be, in my eyes, a really clean way to cut to the chase of what people really are here for versus what they really um, feel they deserve. Meaning, so many are flocking to the shores of this country because the word is that you're going to get medicine when you come here. You're going to get the health care. 
you're going to get the guaranteed um, government assistance if you come to this country. And I think that if these people understood that if they came here and they had to vote to write, but they actually had to work and they had to pay the taxes to fund their views and ideology, what would it change? And that's my whole point here. The voting system should change to whatever party wins, that party pays the way for that term when that city administration's in office. So for all the liberal people that want Joe Biden in office and they want um, more government assistance with so many things, and don't get me wrong, I'm not here to say that the, the, the conservative party isn't screwed up. It's screwed up as well. But the point is, why don't we just have the winning party pay for the party's win? And then the votes didn't vote. You don't pay any taxes. So just make it, make it a tax system where for four years, if the other parties won, then they just pay into the fund for all those agendas that they want to support and, and have. And for those that didn't vote, then you don't pay into the system. And so, but you're actually identified by how you vote. It'd be interesting to see. Wonder how many um, of these illegals would sign up to vote Joe Biden in, but then they understand that their tax rate will be 50% of their income to make up for the 24 or 28% difference in what we are taxed at. And it really just, just is incredible on how we have Joe Biden run around, run his mouth, and the guy, you know, makes just, in many ways, very sad comments. There's so many people out there, I think they're, they're struggling more than ever. I really think that people are, and I think it's, it's if you watch all these YouTuber guys, it is a constant, constant the world is over tomorrow and people click on it so you have to really believe that i guess a lot of people really are in dire straits because that's a comfort zone for them to go and watch a video and realize they're not the only one that's in dire straits and that's maybe why so many gloomer doomer channels are so big because so many people truly are in dire straits i mean i truly believe they are i think a lot of people are right at the edge where how much longer can they continue to push the envelope and borrow money to go bar, buy groceries, affirm these um, credit companies out there that let you buy things and pay it back. They're now offering you to buy groceries and then pay it back. Wow. When you start hearing that's a growing trend, that people are borrowing money to buy groceries, that's that's huge. All right, everybody, I'm going to leave it at that. Sometimes my channel gets a little political. I kind of try to mix it up. But this election year is just going to be so aggravating because you're going to hear all these people mouthing off to convince others to vote in policies and ideology that is not making this country any better. Does anybody really here think this country is in better shape than it was uh, four years ago, three years ago? I mean, does anybody really? I mean, do you really feel like all these higher prices, everything's more expensive, we're in a war, we're in three wars, and the illegal immigration is through the roof? And what about the fentanyl use? What about... Sad story. Here's a woman yesterday that was downtown in D.C. that wants to see this Mayorkas, the um, so-called immigration um, guy that's supposed to be helping control his immigration problems. And she was there because her daughter is dead from fentanyl use. And she was under the impression that he would be at that hearing to hear all these mothers that are coming to uh, the Capitol to share their sad stories of this drug abuse in our country, this drug use is through the roof. And how many, so many of the young are, are dying from this, and we need help to uh, get a handle on that. But where, you know, where, where, where is this guy, right? Where, I mean, besides hiding from the, the reality of what he's helped create. All right, everybody, that's it. Leave it at that. What's the adventure? I have no idea. I got to get an adventure, right? I need an adventure. I got to create an adventure. That's got to do. Let me go work on that. So stay tuned for that, and have a great day. God bless. Stay, God bless. Stay safe.